Now we'll talk about addition and subtraction with mixed numbers. And here's our approach, you can probably guess. We'll take the mixed numbers and rewrite them as improper fractions. And then we can add or subtract those fractions using what we know already about adding and subtracting fractions. And the main thing we know about doing that is that we can add or subtract fractions if they have the same denominator. So we have to write them as like fractions. So first we write them, we, we get rid of the mixed numbers, writing them as improper fractions. And then we write them such that they have common denominators. And we'll work through several examples that involve this. 2 and a fourth plus 1 and 2 thirds. Well, let's rewrite this, but instead of 2 and a fourth, we'll say 4 times 2 is 8 plus 1 is 9. So we have 9 over 4 plus, and instead of 1 and 2 thirds, we'll write 3 times 1 is 3 plus 2 is 5. So that's 5 thirds. Now we can't add these two fractions directly. This is 9 fourths and 5 thirds. And fourths and thirds are different things. These are unlike fractions. So we need to rewrite these such, such that they have a common denominator. And the common denominator you'll probably see is 12. So they'll both be written as something over 12. Well, instead of 9 fourths, what do I put here in the numerator? Well, 4 times what gives me 12? 4 times 3. So 9 times 3 goes right there, and that's 27. So 9 fourths is the same as 27 twelfths. Now the 5 thirds. 3 times what gives me a 12? Uh, that would be 4. 3 times 4 is 12. So 5 times 4 goes right there. 5 times 4 is 20. So I have 27 twelfths plus 20 twelfths. Those can now be added because they're both twelfths. They're both like fractions. So 27 plus 20 is 47. So I have 47 twelfths. And that is the same thing as 3 and 11 twelfths. Now there's another way to do this. Instead of adding them in this manner, we realize that 2 and a fourth is the same thing as 2 plus a fourth, and 1 and 2 thirds is the same thing as 1 plus 2 thirds. So I can treat the 2 and the 1 separately from the 1 fourth and the 2 thirds because everything is just added together, and the order of the numbers in addition doesn't matter. So watch this. Instead of 2 and a fourth plus 1 and 2 thirds, I could write it like, like this, 2 plus 1 plus a fourth plus 2 thirds. And you should be able to see that's the same thing. I have 2 and a fourth plus 1 and 2 thirds. Right now I'm just looking at the whole numbers separately from the fractional parts. And you can do this when they're added together. You can't do this if they're multiplied together. But part of this becomes really easy. The 2 plus 1 is just 3. So I have 3 plus this, 1 fourth plus 2 thirds. And I can write those I'll now rewrite those with a common denominator. This will be 3 plus, and the common denominator is still 12. They'll both be twelfths. Instead of 1 fourth here, I will put 3 twelfths. Instead of the 2 thirds down here, I put 8 twelfths. If you don't see that, think about this. 3 had to be multiplied by what to give me 12? 3 has to be multiplied by 4 to give me 12. So the 2 has to be multiplied by 4 to give me the number to put there. That's how I got the 8, the 8 twelfths. So now you can add these two fractions because they're both twelfths. 3 twelfths plus 8 twelfths is 11 twelfths. So I have 3 plus 11 twelfths. And that's my answer. And of course, it's the same thing as I, as I got earlier. 
Whenever you work a math problem two different ways, you should always get the same answer both ways. If you get a different answer one way than the other, then there's a mistake somewhere in one of them or the other or in both.